Thank you, Jason and the CLA for this invitation to discuss the use of PRP to treat knee osteoarthritis. My PRP work is funded by the VA. I have no commercial conflicts. PRP has been used to treat knee osteoarthritis for more than 10 years. A recent meta-analysis of 18 level one randomized controlled trials largely showed improved outcomes over hyaluronic acid or placebo. The general consensus has been to treat milder disease with leukocyte poor formulations. However, a recent study failed to show differences in outcomes between using leukocyte poor versus leukocyte rich PRP to treat knee osteoarthritis. A very well done triple blinded randomized controlled study published in JAMA comparing a three injection series of leukocyte poor PRP with saline also failed to show differences in pain or structural changes at one year follow up. In my own cohort study, using a three injection series of leukocyte poor PRP to treat mild to moderate knee osteoarthritis, we observed improvements in main Womack pain function and outcomes at six months follow up. While not all patients improved, gait analysis showed that patients reporting improvement in pain walked better. However, we have not been able to show associations between radiographic disease state, platelet count, or any of the growth factor in cytokine levels selected for primary analysis. Using principal component analyses, data from our multiplex panel of 30 cytokines suggests that higher levels of a few cytokines associated with greater pain. While it remains to be seen whether these relationships are meaningful, it has long been speculated that PRP reduces pain through anti-inflammatory effects. We have, however, shown that PRP from older males with knee osteoarthritis actually depressed chondrocyte metabolism and upregulated inflammation. Monocytes are white blood cells that can differentiate into macrophages. The first animation shows that PRP from young healthy males stimulated monocytes to differentiate into the anti-inflammatory M2 subtype. In contrast, PRP from older males with osteoarthritis incited monocyte transformation into pro-inflammatory M1 macrophages. These data support what has long been known that there are factors inhibiting healing and tissue regeneration in the blood of older animals. While there are ways to alter PRP composition, we must first figure out what factors need to be concentrated and what factors need to be removed. One strategy is to optimize the inflammatory profile of the PRP. Here is a cytokine heat map of PRP from three groups of patients where red shows higher inflammation and blue shows lower inflammation. In general, greater cytokine levels are seen with older age and higher OA disease states. While the lowest levels are seen in one healthy young male, a high inflammatory state is observed in another young male. This young man reportedly ate mostly fast food, suggesting a potential role for diet in modulating the inflammatory profile of PRP. The body goes into dopamine rush to heartburn within one hour after eating a two all beef patty fast food burger. In particular, the body has a hard time digesting the trans fat in that burger. The inflammatory effects of a high fat Western diet have also been shown to be similar in severity to that of a bacterial inflection. On the left is the initial PRP prepared from one of my patients 
who had eaten barbecue a few hours before his blood draw. We provided nutritional counseling and sent him home. While the PRP from his blood one week later appeared clear, our flow cytometry data showed that his PRP did not normalize until four weeks later. In conclusion, age and OA disease state affect PRP composition with unclear effects on the outcomes. The tremendous variability in PRP composition limits utility and generalizability of PRP studies. Dietary improvement may positively influence PRP composition. Thank you for your attention.